I've had many happy gaming experiences over the years. I've got to enjoy many consoles and computers and handhelds from Atari to Xbox. I've met and made friendships over video games. Video games are a big, important part of my life. While there's many happy memories, we're not talking about any of those today. We're talking about bad gaming memories and experiences. And some of these are going to be coming from things that you commented on in a community post. And I'm going to be sharing some of my bad gaming experiences with you as well. So this is going to be a list of things that can go horribly wrong, whether they're games, consoles, controllers, or other things. And so here we go. First up, I'm gonna talk about bad controllers and I'm gonna be sharing some of my bad experiences. And the first one that comes to mind is the Power Glove. I picked up the Power Glove after it came out. You know, I was big into collecting Nintendo and after hooking it all up and using the compatible games, it just didn't work right. I tried over and over again. I was very frustrated with that controller and just walked away. Richard James posted, hands down my worst was when I was a kid. I'm 39, I got my hands on a power glove and I was so excited to take that baby home. When I got home, I struggled with the sensors and soon found out that the power glove was whack. I was so disappointed. It looked so cool in the wizard. Yes, it did. That movie made it look cool, but the experience was not. Sega did their own version of a motion sensor control and that was the activator. As a Sega collector, I eventually picked this up in my collection. I showed it in a video long ago. It was a very different controller, but it still was trying to offer a unique experience using some form of motions with your hands and you, you stood in this like octo, octagon ring. Never worked right. I tried to play Eternal Champions with it and it just, just was a total failure and frustrating experience for me. Next up, is the 5200 controller. Now, I am a fan of the Atari 5200, but as a fledgling collector long ago, I did not know really that you could bypass this. Now there's other options on the market, including the controller from Retro Game Boys, but this original controller with the non-centering stick, the buttons that broke on me after playing a very short time, and so I didn't know that you could replace the, the membrane inside. I didn't, know, I didn't know how to repair it. And so this was one of the most frustrating controllers as an early collector. And I'm so glad there's other options on the market, but holy cow, hated this controller. Of the countless games that I've played over the years, there's a few that stand out to me that are really, really bad. Your game experience is gonna be different but I have to talk about this game. It's my number one game probably I dislike of all time, and that is Deadly Towers. I hate this game. Frustrating direction on where to go. There's invisible tiles. There's really, really bad combat. And, and the biggest thing with this is, you know, seeing that cover, you know, being a fan of, uh, you know, Conan the Barbarian and, and fantasy games, the experience on the cover is nothing of the type when you actually play this game. It was an early release for Nintendo, and I have to say, you know, probably if I went back to it, it wouldn't be that bad. But growing up and renting this and checking it out for myself, I hated this game. And to this day, when I think about this game, I really, really dislike it. Uh, Keza Nico said, I bought Deadly Towers for the NES for 60 bucks. New at Toys R Us using birthday money when I was a kid. Ouch, I am so sorry. So yes, one of my most hated games, Deadly Towers. I don't recommend it, but you might be into those types of games. For me, it's a big pass. Next up was a game I played later on, and that was Superman, the new Superman Adventures. For the Nintendo 64, also referred to as Superman 64, and I know many of you have got to see this on the internet on how bad it was. I did it in a bad games video on my channel uh, this last summer, and boy, what a terrible waste of a good license. You know, I am a big Superman fan. This has been well documented on why it was a tragedy, but you know, everything from the level design to actually what you're doing in the level, especially that first level, 
you know, sometimes a first level can make or break a game. And this is, has to be one of the worst experiences on a first level, trying to fly through rings. What a total waste. Absolutely hate this game. It's my probably my most hated game on the Nintendo 64 library. Absolutely tragic. There are several bad platforms that have been offered over the years. You're gonna have your worst gaming experiences, whether it's computer, handheld, or console. And the first one that comes to mind for me is the GameCom. Now, there's two different ways of looking at a GameCom. You know, you can see that it was trying to be innovative with like internet functionality. They also had uh, two cartridge slots and some other things. When it came down to playing games on it, it was a blurry mess. I remember getting mine, I do believe, at KB Toys early after the release. You know, and this came out years later after a Game Boy with its blurry screen. It just didn't work. Uh, you know, I'm showing Centipede here and you can see how blurry the screen is. You know, being a fan of those Atari classics, it, 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 it just didn't translate into a great console once whatsoever. And it, it was a true terrible failure and I can see why. Now, the other one I have to mention and some other people definitely mentioned were the Tiger game handhelds. Now, I'm a huge LCD like fan of those simple games such as Game & Watch. You know, when I think of Nintendo and their early success into gaming, I think of the Game & Watch series. I'm a big fan of the Game & Watch series. I've even done a few homebrews and worked with uh, some programmers making LCD style games. I'm a big fan of those. But you know, when it came down to Tiger handhelds, while they're cool to collect, they're almost like so bad it's cool to collect. And there are some good ones. I have to mention uh, the Gauntlet handheld that I had uh, as a kid. That was a fun one. And these were cheap handhelds and th they had you know basic technology, barely any sound, but there are some bad ones out there. And, and the problem is, is you buy these thinking you're gonna have uh, a, a fun gaming experience connected to the license that they're advertising. Nope. Many of the gaming experiences had wonky control, Frustrating control, the durability of them was is is eh at, at best. And so, yes, Tiger handhelds in general are pretty terrible when it comes to quality, but they are they are fun to collect. There's hundreds of them out there. Um, I always pursue ones that I don't have, but I have to say, for the majority, it's a bad gaming experience. Mr. Laidback83 said definitely the few Tiger electronic games that I had would be the worst gaming experience for me. And I wanna know what ones you had. But anyways, it's, it's shocking how many there are out there for sure. Later on in my collecting, I picked up the Mattel Hyperscan. And I didn't know what to think when I picked it up. I did pick it up in a toy aisle. And you know, I heard Mattel was returning with a gaming console. It was more of a toy and collectible. Uh, there was, I do believe, five games released for it. X-Men was the pack-in. And it used this technology where you would scan cards and they sold booster packs, and the, the booster packs would give you abilities in the games. It's like essentially the worst microtransactions that you could think of and making them a part of the gaming experience. And the collecting the games is, is not too bad, but getting a full set of cards, and even, I do believe, uh, uh, there's, there's hundreds of cards for these games scattered out there. They're difficult to track down now. Um, the durability of the console is is average at best. The graphics were kind of like an early PlayStation 1, even though it came out in 2006. It just had AV hookups as well in 2006. It was just a, an abysmal experience. I tried liking it. You know, I'm a big fan of X-Men. And as you can see here, it just is not a great, uh, it doesn't look great. It's not fun to play. And every game had a different use of the cards but I'm gonna say avoid this at all costs. One of the worst consoles to ever be ever be released of all time due to just not being fun and having, having the collectability and having to scan cards frequently while trying to play a game just doesn't work for me. Many of you also said, well, what about the Tiger R-Zone? Yes, I picked up the Tiger R-Zone later, but for me, I knew when I picked it up that it was bad. And one thing is definitely expectations. Expectations are gonna determine 
whether something's going to be a bad gaming experience or not. I had very low expectations when I picked up the Tiger R Zone, and I know it's a bad gaming experience, but I didn't check it out too much, and I, when I played it, I knew it was going to be really bad. But sometimes you don't even get to the game to experience it, and I'm going to be talking about those, and I have to put this on my list because I experienced it not once, but twice, and that's the Xbox 360 Red Ring of Death. You know, I won my first Xbox 360 in a contest for Mountain Dew every 10 minutes.com, I think. And I was excited. The console did last several years. Then one day, I did get the Red Ring of Death and was really frustrated as my system was dead. Now, there are ways around it. You can get these sometimes fixed, but at the time, it was kind of a game over and I had to replace it. I went to GameStop and I did get a replacement. And then that went out. I was so frustrated having it not once, but twice. And so I don't know out there, definitely tell me if you had to experience the Red Ring of Death and how many times, but over the over about eight years, I had Red Ring of Death twice. Microsoft eventually addressed this by upgrading the hardware and doing a redesign. But for a time, many people were discussing how frustrated they were with the Red Ring of Death, and I can see why. Last and definitely not least is, I'm gonna talk about something that's happened to probably many gamers out there, especially gamers a long time, going back to uh, computer tapes or computer discs, three and a half and five and a quarter, or even CDs, and that's games that don't work when you buy them and you wanna play them. You know, I got really excited the first time getting Virtua Fighter Remix, and I got this at a yard sale back in the day and I took it home and I checked it out and as you may not be able to see too much, but it is totally scratched and does not work. Now I could probably get this resurfaced, but at the time I didn't know anybody that had a machine to fix it and holy cow, that is so frustrating. I also have some memories of playing some early PC titles on three and a half discs and they, had, they were spread across multiple discs. I do believe TIE Fighter was the first one and one of my discs went bad and then I couldn't play the game. I was so frustrated with that. You know, that is one thing about certain formats. They get corrupted, they, they, they stop working. Uh, even like copied games and stuff, sometimes that can happen where you're, you're, you're putting a, a, a disc into a computer and it just doesn't work anymore or a console one thing I really liked about the PlayStation 1 is the extra coding that it had where uh, games could be resurfaced, they were tough. Certain consoles could read scratch games better than others. You're gonna have your memories probably of GameStop working because the discs got scratched. I know I had mine for sure. I typically kept really good care of my games, but sometimes when I picked up used games, they had scratches and they were inoperable. So that's it, that's my list. I want to thank everybody for commenting on my channel and watching my videos. It is most appreciated as I'm uploading different content every week. So what are your bad gaming memories? I want to hear in the comments below. And thank you everyone for coming to my channel and watching my videos. If you like what you see, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the immortal John Hancock. You have a good day.